Hi, Mason Marsh here. I've got my old Canon AE-1 um, and my 20 to 35 uh, f2.8 L lens. This was the first uh, of the Canon L wide zoom lenses. And uh, I bought this camera and this lens set up back in 1992. Yeah, so it had been the summer of 1992 and used it all throughout my career as a newspaper photographer and for a few years after that. And it's got about a million frames shot through it. It's uh, been all over the place and been uh, beat up pretty bad. And I took on a challenge from uh, my cohort to shoot a roll of film through it. It's been a long time since I've shot film. So I went down and bought a roll of 400 Tri-X, or not Tri-X, T-Max film, which is um, one of the black and white films I shot a lot of in my day with this camera. This camera's had, I don't know, who knows how many thousands of rolls of black and white film through it. Um, so I thought I would uh, load it up and walk around St. John's here. The snap challenge that I was presented was to take a, a roll of film, shoot it through the camera, process it, have it scanned, and, uh, and then post the results. So here I have 36 <laughs> frames. Gosh, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. Isn't this awesome? It's a uh, film canister. Remember those? Anyway, I joke a lot about hipsters and um, you know shooting film. The truth is, it's I don't have any romantic um, attachment to film. I shot so much of it back when it was something I had to do for a living that, um, and I've developed so much of it that I, I really don't think it's that great. But um, you know, I think it is a good exercise every now and then to to just shoot a roll if for nothing else than to help you appreciate more the uh, pleasure of shooting a digital camera. <laughs> so here we go. This is me loading up a roll into the EOS one. It's amazing. Yeah, you never forget how to do this. Okay, a couple things with this camera. It's a uh, uh, autofocus camera, and it's got all the, the program modes that you would have had in 1992. Um, but I'm going to use it in full manual, except for I'm going to use it for autofocus because the manual focus of this lens actually doesn't work. The switch is broken. Uh, a lot of things about this lens could use a little love. But um, it's actually so old that I can't get it repaired anymore. You can't get the parts for it. So you'll see that the zoom rings are no longer rubber rings, they're instead uh, gaff tape. And uh, the focus ring is barely turns, and uh, the, since the switch doesn't work, um, I won't be messing with it anyway. But I will be shooting in full manual mode, and I'll be doing my best to, um, to capture my neighborhood and uh, in all of its glory here. So here we go. <laughs> more fun than this. I don't get why the hipsters are all, all about the film. Oh, so. the films, yeah. At least well. the true hipsters are just rocking Olga's. They're not dropping yeah. enough, enough money to, you know. I tell them, you know, it, those people who really romanticize film never had to shoot it for a living. Yeah. Wouldn't be so into it. Yeah, they'd be like, oh yeah, it's film. Friend in Seattle, Lindsay is still shooting I keep finding myself looking at the back of the camera like I could look at the screen on the back. <laughs> it's such a habit it's, that you shoot and then look at the, the screen and chimp and it's, uh, it's such a habit. You, know, you realize you're, you're such a trained animal when you shoot with a different kind of camera that doesn't have the systems that you're used to. So I shoot, and it, even though I know there's no screen, I tell myself, oh, don't bother chimping, there's no screen, I still do it. It's, it's muscle memory. Really strange. Um, also finding it really hard trusting the meter. Uh, one of the things I, one of the reasons I chimp so much is I want to make sure that I'm getting the exposure I want. And, uh, and so I spot meter off of things, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be pretty close, but man, 
be nice to have a screen to double check. I just have to hope that I get it or do like I used to do, which is bracket, right? You take a shot, move the exposure, take another shot. So lots and lots of fun. Very um, good exercise. Thanks, Cal. This one's, uh, this one's making my head hurt a little bit. <laughs> No, you're fine. Can I take you guys this picture? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. I'm gonna stand right here by this post. I'm doing a, a project with, with, yeah, you guys are models. I'm doing a project with film and I haven't shot film in probably 15 years. And so I'm, awesome. I'm experimenting all over the place and it's, I have no idea if it's gonna work. <laughs> so there we go, thank you. All right, let me try. Can I get you right here? The sun was a little shiny on your hand, so try that. There we go. I think this will work better. But who knows, right? <laughs> Thank you so much. You're lovely. Thank you. Oh, kid's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. She's my assistant. <laughs> I'm finding the uh, layout of this camera um, you know, familiar but confusing. Canon hasn't moved some of their buttons in years. <laughs> so they're right where you'd expect them to be. And then uh, the dials, of course, are very familiar. But I'm having a hard time with some of the uh, minor adjustments, but it's fun. definitely way too heavy. I won't be complaining about carrying my 5D Mark III for a while. This thing's about twice as heavy. And most of that's just batteries. It's pretty, pretty ridiculous. To have eight uh, AA batteries to, just to wind to film and to power a meter and trip a shutter. Kind of silly. I remember thinking that the, uh, I think it's six, five or six frames a second that this does. I remember thinking at the time that that was blazing fast. Now, of course, we can do 10 frames a second, which makes this look downright pedestrian.
Also finding that I'm only willing to do about two frames on any particular subject because I don't want to waste them. Keeps me from taking chances. If I had more frames to give, I would... I would expect a lot more uh, freedom, right? If you uh, bracket every shot three times and you're shooting a roll of 36, you know, there's 12 photos that you're doing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy how stifling only having 36 exposures is. But, and think about it, it you know, if every frame costs you money to take it, you're not going to be so fast to waste anything. And I think that. Part of the important uh, process of creation is taking risks and wasting things. Um, and in this case, I'm just not willing to, to blow the frames if I'm not sure it's a good shot. Now, somebody would say that that's, that's a good thing, that knowing it's a good shot is, is important, but... I'm inclined to think that sometimes you just don't know it's a good shot until later when you get it back on the computer and, and you get a chance to work with it. Or in this case, you get the negatives back and you look at them on the light table. Anyway, this roll's almost done. I'm at uh, 26 frames, so I've got 10 more shots to do. And um, I'm finding with this today, I'm much more inclined to shoot abstracts and architecture and things like that than than people because it's it's such a big camera and it's so clunky and loud that uh, taking people photos it's they're almost disturbed by it it's taking a few portraits plus I'm so slow with this thing because it's not familiar taking someone's portrait is frustratingly slow I just don't know about the autofocus on this thing too. It's so hesitant. And I know that's part of that's the lens is beat up, but I think it's too, it's also a function of the function of the um, just the technology of you know 20 years ago just slow it's just slow what's that we're gonna drop off a roll of film I know it sounds weird doesn't it Can I take your picture? Yeah. You want to sit on one of the bar stools? Aren't they lovely? <laughs> Sun right across your 
Just so I get closer if that's alright. Doing a project with film and I haven't shot it in years and it's oh, it's fun but it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I keep looking at the back like it's gonna do something. Yeah, I haven't Well as you can see from the behind the scenes video, I didn't have the best time shooting my old EOS one. Um I do love this camera. I, I've got so many memories of uh, times in my youth carrying this camera on assignment. Um, but I tell you, after shooting digital now for the last several years, it's really hard for me to go back and, and shoot film. Um, it was a very good exercise in that it forced me to slow down and think about metering and um, be very deliberate about my shots. And I just wanted to kind of summarize what shooting a roll of film <laughs> uh, has kind of taught me. Number one, um, when you have a roll of 36 exposures and you're going to be paying for the processing of that film, and in my case, I had to pay for someone to scan it as well since I don't have a film scanner, um, I felt like each shot had to be um, kind of worth it. And that doesn't sound like a bad thing, but what it really forced me to do was not take chances, not um, try things that might not work. I, I kind of just stuck with things that were safe, things that I was pretty sure were going to turn out okay. Um, and that is a, that's not a, um, a good way to be creative, I don't think. The other thing about shooting uh, just a roll of 36 exposures is... Um, I didn't want to bracket. I didn't want to jump around too much uh, on exposures and take three or four shots for every um, for every scene that I wanted to photograph, which I would have done back in my film days because I didn't, you know, when I was a newspaper photographer, I didn't pay for the film. I didn't pay for the processing. I just shot it, um, you know, and, and had to had to get the shots. And so I would have bracketed all over the place to make sure I got the proper exposures. Um, shooting just a roll, uh, I, there was a couple times I shot multiple shots, but most of those times were just accidents where I forgot to take my finger off the button. I'm just used to sort of, you know, bang, bang, bang. And, um, in this case, I, I really just wanted to, you know, be deliberate and just click, click, click. So, um, I think, you know, shooting film kind of made me conservative in my, in my photography. The other thing I found is, um, I really appreciate how far technology has come when it comes to optics and autofocus performance you know the whole digital the whole sensor aside everything forward of the film plane um, on this camera is pretty it's pretty sloppy I gotta say you know looking at these negatives and a grain again you know shooting a roll of black and white negative film isn't exactly a, a precise way to test you know, optical performance, but in just glancing at the negatives, I see a lot of problems. Um, some softness in the lens, some, um, you know, aberrations from, you know, solar, sun flare and things like that. These are all things that, um, you know, companies like Canon and Nikon and, and all the others have really um, come a long way in the coatings they put on lenses, the way they uh, place the elements in the lens, everything has come a long way in 20 years. Just like, you know, if I went and drove a car from 20 years ago, it's not going to do what my new car can do now. Um, heck, my new car can park itself, right? It, it's got a camera that points out the back, shows me if I'm going to run over anything as I'm backing up. An old car, you know, that's that's silly. There's nothing like that. So, um, you know, I think back to 20 years ago, this was cutting-edge technology. The EOS One was... Um, blazingly fast it was robust it was um you know optics were great the autofocus was considered you know revolutionary and i look at it now and it's plotting and grinding kind of slow um i look at my new you know camera this is the 5d mark iii which actually isn't new this is actually three years old now um, but this lens is new this is the new uh, 11 to 24 the optical quality of this lens um, paired with the digital sensor technology and all of the great digital workflow things we have, software and all of that. We should not take for granted that this technology has come so far. 
We should be thankful and look back. And, and, and everybody that does this type of activity, I'm sure, is going to look back and say, wow, you know, um, we didn't have it so great 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Now, that said, there are a lot of people that want this sort of flawed, imperfect uh, look of film and of these old lenses and old cameras. And I, I can understand that. I really can. Um, there's time, especially when things like portraiture and stuff, where you want an affected look. Um, but I prefer to do that in, in post. I prefer to do that in Lightroom and in Photoshop or in a plug-in. Um, that way I still have the pristine, I'm not going to say perfect, but the pristine and um, <clears throat> clear, precise image. Uh, and then I affect it. I'd rather not bring a imperfect um file into uh into the project so hopefully that makes sense so it was a, it was a good activity uh, i'm going to go through my uh 36 fo photos here real quick for you and show you uh and tell you what i think of them but just as a summary um it's not something i'm going to start doing a lot of i'm not going to start uh, shooting film um there's a couple other things to keep in mind with shooting film and i'm just gonna get on my soapbox here for a second um <clears throat> i went down to the camera store and I bought the roll of film. It was $8 for a roll of 36 exposure, black and white, just 400 T max, nothing fancy. Um, the processing I did at my local camera shop here in St. John's, which is Blue Moon Camera and Machine, and these guys are awesome. Uh, they do a fabulous job and um, they're really uh, amazing people down there. Um, and they processed the film and they did low resolution scans. And so it cost me $9 to develop the roll and 15 more dollars to do the low res scans. So I paid, uh, you know, $24 to get this envelope back with these negatives in it and this disc. And I got a CD, you know, for 24 bucks, which, you know, isn't bad. It's certainly not outrageous. Um, but you add in the eight dollars for the film, and now we're talking about you know thirty-two dollars for thirty-six exposures, almost a dollar an exposure, right? Um, that's kind of crazy. And the other thing to think about: there was water used in the processing of this film, quite a bit of it. There was um, chemicals and uh, paper for this envelope, and the plastic for the uh, CD and the glassine envelopes for the for the negative strips the negatives themselves the pro the, the the creation of the film very chemical intensive process all of this stuff has an environmental footprint and i know that the that the development and and creation of this camera also has an environmental footprint but i can shoot hundreds of thousands of frames through this with little environmental impact in the in the process um you know a little bit of electricity for for working on them on the computer but that's about it the uh process of developing film scanning it and all of that really um probably more of a high impact uh activity than i would care to do on a regular basis it's okay to do from time to time but now i've got this envelope what am i going to do with this disc and what am i going to do with these negatives i guess i'll take them down and throw them in the bin uh, my tote that i've got in the basement that's full of binders of negatives i've got you know thousands of rolls of slides and negatives stored away in my basement and i guess i'll just add this to the pile um you know kind of sad actually when you think about it anyway let's go over to lightroom and take a look at these photos um, these are the 36. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just show you all the flaws. Uh, normally you wouldn't see everyone's photos from a shoot or from a, a, a roll, if you will. But I promised that when I did this challenge, I would show uh, everybody everything that I got. So here is the grid view of all 36. And just looking at this, <clears throat> you can see I started out by taking one shot of each uh, subject, of each location. And then I started, uh, when I got to the, the two girls at uh, Cathedral Park, I took two shots real quickly side by side, um, and they uh, that was unintentional. I meant to just take one shot, but it's just habit to, to push the button over and over and over again. And then I repositioned them to get the, her hand out of the direct sunlight, and we've got the, uh, the little worse uh, composition, but a little better exposure. 
And then I've got these three from Under the Bridge, none of which I'm real thrilled with. Uh, and then I've got the two of the um, pipes over the mural. Uh, another repetitive shot is the window with a woman in it. I was trying to get a woman through the reflection of the window, but I didn't have a polarizer on the lens. And uh, <clears throat> with the kind of contrasty nature of the black and white film, you just don't see her in the shot. I think if I'd shot that with the digital, you would definitely see her through the glass. Anyway. Um, more shots of this fence with the barbed wire, just trying to make sure I had focus and exposure right. At this point, I'm starting to run out of time um, in my my walk, and so I start to kind of move along. There are two street shots in downtown St. John's. I was trying to get a shot of this little girl and her dad out having lunch and playing on the sidewalk, but it's such a high contrast scene from the sunlit side of the street to the shadows that you actually don't see much in the shadows. And this is something I probably could pull out uh, in Lightroom here, but these are all straight out of camera um, from the scans, not really straight out of camera. Then I took a one of this funny sign uh, for a kombucha bar. That's such a Portland thing. And then a couple of portraits of my kids in the stroller as they patiently wait for me to finish this roll of film. A self-portrait of me. And then the last three shots, are uh, two of them are a portrait of a girl that was working out in front of a tavern. Um, and then one, the last shot of the frame is uh, Zeb Andrews, who's the guy <laughs> at uh, Blue Moon Camera. He's a pretty famous photographer here in Portland. He's a fabulous photographer. If you don't follow him on Flickr or Google Plus or any of the social media, his name again is Zeb, Z-E-B, Andrews, and a fantastic uh, photographer and a film aficionado. And he's the guy I gave my film to, so I used the last frame for him. That is my roll of 36. I'll be posting all of these in an album on Google Plus so you can peruse them uh, in more detail. But uh, that is, that's the film challenge. There you have it. A quick walk through my neighborhood with the classic uh, EOS One camera with the 20 to 35 uh, 2.8L lens, which is just a beast. Um, really slow, clanky, loud, obtrusive camera. I'm so happy to be getting back to my 5D Mark III and my 7D Mark II. Much better, much more preferred digital. Uh, I will leave the film to the hipsters and to the people who uh, really enjoy shooting it. I have nothing against them doing that, but it's not for me. Thank you very much. So hopefully that uh, that was a fun look at behind the scenes and um, fun look at this little snap challenge. I'm sure I'll have some more stuff like this in the future, but you won't be seeing much more from me as far as film goes. I'll be back to digital before you know it. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.